Johnny Mathis, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, save COD charges by sending check or money order or use your credit card. This is CNN. The Space Shuttle Columbia sits on the launch pad delayed by weather. Number of Americans joining the jobless lines unexpectedly drops to a two-year low as the economy is flexing some muscle. Welcome to News Hour. I'm Reed Collins in Washington. And I'm Bobby Batiste at CNN Center in Atlanta. We'll get to those stories in just a moment, but first, Jim Huber joins us now with this late-breaking sports story, Jim. Bobby, on the eve of what might be baseball's finest, final game of the 1992 season, it has lost one of its finest pioneers. Red Barber, the legendary voice of the Reds and the Dodgers and, of course, the Yankees for so many years in the 40s and 50s, died of complications just moments ago after surgery last week in a Tallahassee hospital. He was 84 years old. Full ball fog, looking on at the full turn of the wheel today. Third, one and one. His real first name was Walter, but only his parents and the lovely Lila ever knew that. The world knew him simply as Red, the old redhead, Red Barber. With his silky Florida twang, he became the old Cincinnati Reds in the 30s and the Yankees in the 50s, but will forever be thought of as the voice of the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1939 to 1953, from Archie Vaughn and Eddie Stanky to Jackie Robinson and Duke Snyder and Pee Wee Reese. They were tearing up the pea patch, sitting in the catbird seat. Oh, doctor, was he ever good. Good, perhaps, because he was never a fan, not of theirs, but simply of the game. He was the first to call a ball game with immaculate impartiality. And as he once wrote, I think the listeners appreciated that. He broadcast the very first night baseball game and the first televised game. And when he was finished, he and Mel Allen became the first sportscasters ever to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1978. For the last dozen or so years, he has worked from his office at home in Tallahassee, Florida, with weekly morning chats on National Public Radio, everything from the state of the game to the state of his azaleas. A whole new audience grew to hang on every word of his, as though a pennant or a World Series were in the balance. Walter Barber was 84. The old redhead will live forever. Walter Red Barber, dead just moments ago in a Tallahassee hospital at the age of 84 years old in the baseball world mourns as the uh, final game, what could be the final game of the 1992 World Series comes up tonight in Toronto. The Toronto Blue Jays taking a three games to one lead. We will update that series for you in just a little while. Reed? Thank you, Jim. Well, it is T-minus and then what for the Space Shuttle Columbia? Charles Jaco is following the would-be launch. Charles? No, Reed, T-minus and then what indeed. Right now, the count is stuck at T-minus nine minutes and holding. NASA people tell us they hope to resume the count within ten minutes or so. The problem uh, at the Kennedy Space Center is we right now take a look at uh, the Johnson Space Center, at the uh, control panels there, is the wind. It's the weather. What's happened? is that high winds at the Kennedy Space Center are above the 15 knots that NASA feels is safe in case there has to be an emergency landing back at the landing site there. In addition, there is bad weather across the Atlantic Ocean in Spain and Morocco. There are low clouds, low visibility at the emergency landing sites at Zaragoza and Moron, Spain, and at Ben Gurir in Morocco. We should know shortly what's going to happen. The shuttle crew can only be in there for about another hour and 45 minutes because they will have been on their backs too long. So if this bird doesn't launch by 1.46 Eastern time, it's not going to launch today. They're going to try again tomorrow. Among the, uh, the manifest of this uh, shuttle mission is a satellite covered with mirrors that would be launched and laser beams fired at it and study the shifts in the Earth's crust, hoping to predict earthquakes, several other materials processing and life science experiments. But some experts, some scientists have said this mission is a waste of time and money and that it shouldn't go at all because there's nothing on it, at least hardly anything, that couldn't be done cheaply and possibly better by robots, by automated systems, by unmanned spacecraft. One of the chief critics of this mission launching with this particular payload is John Pike of the Federation of American Scientists. Mr. Pike joins us from our Washington, D.C. studios. Uh, Mr. Pike, what's the problem? Uh, we understand you and your group have, have complained that this mission really uh, shouldn't be flown at all. Well, I think the problem here is that uh, we're spending a tremendous amount of money on uh, 
actually launching the space shuttle mission uh, much more than the uh, value of the uh, cargoes that the uh, shuttle is going to be flying here. Uh, it's basically like you were flying a, uh, driving a pickup truck. Uh, you've got some interesting things in the glove compartment, but nothing in the back of the pickup truck. Uh, they've had problems coming up with enough payloads to fly on the shuttle since the space station has been delayed and most scientific missions have been put on unmanned rockets. And I think it's questionable whether there's enough value out of this mission to justify the expenditure. Well, the bottom line would be in terms of expenditure and in terms of human lives, do you and your group feel that NASA is needlessly endangering the lives of the astronauts to, to launch this uh, payload? Well, certainly compared to other shuttle missions that we've seen in the past and other missions that are planned in the future, it strikes me that uh, when you look at the payload bay and see how little this shuttle is carrying, that it's questionable whether they ought to be flying this mission. I would have thought they would have been able to come up with more payloads to justify the cost of this flight. All right, uh, you tell me, why do you think, in your opinion, NASA's flying it? They're saying that this mission proves that the shuttle is a uh, good base for space science conducted by humans uh, in space. What's your opinion? Why do you think uh, NASA's decided to go ahead? Well, I think that they do have some useful payloads on here. The uh, satellite for earthquake detection and understanding continental drift is going to be important. They've got some interesting microgravity uh, experiments on it as well. But uh, they're certainly flying far from full. Uh, they. I would have thought would have been able to come up with some other experiments to fly on this mission. It just looks to me to be underutilized. John Fike of the Federation of American Scientists, thank you very much. As we said, right now there is a hold. We don't know how long it's going to last uh, of the shuttle. We will provide live coverage here on CNN when and if the launch takes place. But for right now, we just don't know when it's going to take place. Charles Jaco, CNN, reporting. Well, you get a glimpse inside a cockpit with a plane crash in progress. It all comes from cockpit recordings released by the federal government. TWA's flight 843 caught fire as it was taking off from New York's Kennedy Airport in July. All 293 people on board got off alive.